Hey, Star Wars fans and Rule of the Galaxy fans, it's Joe, and another special episode. Um, our crew was asked to do a one-on-one -on -one interview with Miss Femi Taylor, uh, also known as Ula, in The Return of the Jedi. Uh, Alfie, D-Doc, myself, uh, got up on stage, did an interview with her. It was incredible. Uh, we were very nervous because uh, it was our first time meeting her. She was great. And, um, you know, for those few seconds that she was on screen in Return of the Jedi, we asked plenty of questions and she was very entertaining. So I wanted you to check out this special episode again down at the ICC Con hosted by ECPC TV. And it was a Rule of the Galaxy crew of Joe, Alfie, and Didac interviewing Femi Taylor, uh, also known as Ula in The Return of the Jedi. I hope you enjoy it and we'll be back soon with more episodes. May the force be with you. And welcome back to the 2023 ICC Con. We were lucky enough, the Rule of the Galaxy podcast crew, to be able to do this show and uh, really excited to have a special guest. You will all know her as Ula from The Return of the Jedi, Miss Femi Taylor. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. We are glad you're here. So I'm Joe. This is Alfie. This is D-Doc. We run... Yep, we run the Rule the Galaxy podcast, and again, the ECPC TV crew were kind enough to bring us in to, to do the show with you. you. You've been at the con, um, you know, you've been here in Tennessee. What's it been like so far for you? Uh, a lot of people coming up and asking a lot of questions. Are you having fun? I'm having a lot of fun. Uh, yesterday was pretty busy, um, a lot of people coming up and appreciating what I did in Jedi. I think tomorrow I've got a Q&A, so I think all the questions will be coming out tomorrow. <laughs> but it's just been wonderful to be here meeting all the fans. Well, that's great. Can you, um, you know, I grew up, I watched Return of the Jedi live when I was right. younger. Um, <laughs> can you believe that it's been 40 years I know. since you created that role? It's and crazy. I mean, 40 years. It seems like it was yesterday. <laughs> It seems like yesterday, and then you think, well, 40 years is a long time ago. But the wonderful thing is it's still standing, and here I am. Well, that's great. Alfie or D-Doc? Yeah, I mean, I was just, I just took my six-year-old and five-year-old to see it in theaters for right. its next right. run. So it's like kind of crazy to think, like, I, I personally was born in 91, so. <laughs> I, I <laughs> you weren't supposed Here to say go. that. I latched onto it as a kid myself because I had the original trilogy VHSs, and I just yes. remember like that. Yeah. That's what I latched onto. Yeah, yeah. So it's just really cool to think like it's just something that's still living later for it, these little kids yes, now. Generation after generation. It's yeah. Yeah. So it, it's it, it's really it, that's what I think makes Star Wars so special and it's got to be crazy for you to think that you're back on the big screen for yeah. Return of the Jedi yes. again yeah. you know 40 yeah. years later and it's apparently amazing. it was his 40th anniversary yesterday yes yeah May 25th May 25th yes but, um, yeah <laughs> <laughs> so so I, I was reading up and I know you've done a lot of things outside of Star yeah. Wars this is just because the fandom knows you from that you're yeah. a very talented person very great dancer <clears throat> 1981 you were part of Cats in yes. London, correct? Yes. And, and that's where you found out, or during that time, during the run of Cats, you found out you were going to be on Return of the Jedi. Well, actually, it was the second time I went into Cats, because okay. I did it originally, and then I went back into Cats about three years later to do a, a part that I did understudy, and I felt that I was old enough to do eight shows a week, so I went back into it, and that's when I got, um, got the phone call from my agent saying, oh, they're auditioning for this film, and would you like to go up for it? And we don't know what it is. Da, 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 da. So yes, there's a whole story there. <laughs> <laughs> You're good. So you, you did go back for the special editions and mm -hmm. refilm some things. Yeah. How different was it from the experience in what would have been 81, 82? It was different because I felt, I felt it sort of, didn't have the authenticity that we had in, you know, 82. Uh, and I think because CGI has come into it, the right. characters were different. I was very lucky to work with all the actors. You know, we had Carrie Fisher, Mark Hamill, Billy Dee, um, Jeremy Bullock. I mean, we had everybody in Jabba's Palace, which was great. So that brought that sort of an energy to the, to, to the scene. 
Whereas when I went back, it was, I felt quite solo doing it because they had three new characters that Three new down. dancers, right? Dancers, yeah. <laughs> but I, yeah, yeah. Three new dancers, and I just felt it was quite sort of alienated from what it was originally. But at the same time, you needed it. I mean, like for instance, when you see me coming down into the pit and I get killed, that wasn't in the original, uh, the original script. That was just added. So we needed it. But it was, it was, it was different. And I, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you, you can't beat the original. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, you guys have something? Go ahead. Well, well, now, are we sure that you actually got killed, or is there a possibility? You know, we got all these Disney Plus shows, you know, you exactly. never know. Well, you never know, because you don't see me getting killed. Yeah. Who knows? I mean, who would yeah. not pay to watch on Disney Plus and Ula's, like, dance hall, where people would come and watch you yeah, dance, absolutely. right? Absolutely. Yeah. I think we'd be in yeah, on that. Be amazing. I, I mean, I don't know if I could do it again. <laughs> how old I am now, I mean, I'm getting my double, which I wouldn't like, hate. And I'd sort of go on a constant diet, just get back in the costume again. But um, yes, I mean, yes, there, there is scope. Yes. So one of the things that I found amusing was you, I guess in an interview in the past, when you were asked to come and do the uh, audition for Jedi, mm -hmm. they wanted you to come in swimwear. Yeah, I know. And you were a little nervous that it might be well, more of a blue kind yeah, of movie. Yeah, yeah. I was, uh, you know, I was sort of a little bit incredulous about the, the what I was, the brief, and it was like the brief. <laughs> and I, you know, I was in two minds whether to go up because I just thought well, I'm a trained dancer and I'm wasting my time. And they didn't tell me who was directing at the film, what I was doing, just would you go in your bikini? And I just thought, well, oh, okay, but oh, thank goodness. And then the voice <laughs> went, Come on, Femi, get up there and go and meet the director. And, and yeah, and this is where I am now. Amazing, <laughs> amazing. Yeah. Go ahead. So both of my girls are in dance, and they oh, have been for nice. years. So how long of a career have you been uh, a dancer? Well, um, say? well, I started when I was four years old. Okay. And um, my very first dance it, it was fortuitous. I wasn't going to go to this dance class. And my best friend's mom said, do you want to go with her? And I went, yeah, OK, whatever. And I went along. I went, oh, my goodness, I think I found my calling. And so, you know, I remember running back to my mom saying, look, I, I, I feel I'd like to be a dancer. And from that day, I, I was very dedicated and determined. And I did it all through my, you know, young years. And then when I got to about, I don't know, 16, after I did my education, I got into London School of Contemporary Dance. And I trained there for, actually I trained there for a year. And I was going to go to New York. I actually went to New York as well, and then I got into my first West End show. But um, I've had longevity as a dancer for 40 years. Wow, Goodness. that's amazing. You know, 40 years. And it, you know, it, it is a short career. You know, and I do sing, and I've had to act as well. Not act, but I've had to be able to sing. But, um, it, I guess because I've been well trained, so it's <laughs> you know I've, I've had a good career and yeah, wonderful work from it. So I was looking into it, and you went back to Cats for a TV yeah. show. Is that right? Or something on TV related to Cats? No, I oh gosh, in '98 um, something like that, and they made a role for you, Exotica. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes, the video. We won't yeah, get the okay. video and the film mixed, mixed, mixed up. So the video, I went back, and I wasn't going to go back to do it because I had done it in Australia. And again, you know, this, the cats just kept coming up in my life, but for various reasons and for the right reasons. So um, the choreographer, late Julian Lin, called me up and said, darling, I'd like you to come and be back in cats and be, you know, exotic or something. And then I went, oh. And I said, OK, look, as long as I'm in the background, that's where you can't see me. I can see myself. But I didn't want to be known as just doing cats, although I've done loads of other things. Um, and so all, the, the, all my female boyfriends in the show, they call me Exotica. <laughs> they, they said, oh, yeah, you. And that's how I got Exotica. But it, it's the character that wasn't there originally. Gotcha. Now, one thing I'll ask too, paired with the dancing, what was it like to have the makeup in Star Wars? Like, did that like screw you up at all? Was it like, you know, because you... the tails, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Lekus. Lekus. yeah the lekus. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. No, no. It, um, like, how long did that take to get into okay, costume? The makeup took the makeup took around about four hours because back in those days there were tiny little pots they hadn't experienced. 
And because of my dark skin, you know, they had to pick up layer after layer after layer, and then they finally got it. Um, and the same happened when I went back to the special edition. <laughs> they had the tiny little pots. I think you're joking, but I need to spray me, but that doesn't matter. But the actual costume was very, I mean, the director, Richard Marquin, did call me up and said, you, we're going to put you in leather and lace. Do you mind? And I said, I don't mind, as long as it is, you know, it, it's conducive to the character. And I think it's a very, co very clever costume, so that was fine. But then when I had the lekus on, that really sort of threw me off balance because I had different turns, different directions, and, you know, you just have to adjust on set. You have to. And, and being there on my own and being the only dancer there and everybody looking, you just had to... You can sort of have a tizzy and go, oh, I'm not going to do it because it's just slapping me in the face. Um, I just thought, no, get on with it. And um, No, but it, I think it's a very clever costume. And yeah. it's interesting. I've just been with all the Twi'leks. And who would have thought that there oh, would yeah. be a whole sort of Twi'lek fandom coming after that? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, yeah. You see them, it's incredible. Yeah. It's, it's awesome. one of the most popular characters now. I mean, the most part. Wouldn't you agree? I would yeah. agree. Yeah. yeah. Male and female. Yeah, I mean, true. it's just... Uh, <laughs> Yes. It's crazy. Now, I, I have to ask, we, you know, we're guys, we're goofy, we collect the little action figures, the toys, everything. Do you have your Ula action figure? Do you have a copy of that? Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. Yes, I do. I have, I have the bust. I have the, the bigger one. Like, I have, okay. Yes, and I have the, and I don't even know the name. I should learn the name of the, the bigger one. Maybe you can... Is it Hot Toys or is it Hot Toys or Gentle Giant? Gentle Giant or Hot Toys, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But yes, yes, I do. And you keep it out so when people come in the house, you go, oh, yeah, that's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm not ostentatious about it. And a lot of people don't sort of put two and two together, but then they do. But I do have it. Yes, it's on our lovely bookshelf display. So Lovely. Great. How much choreography went into that scene as far as the dancing went. Yeah, that's interesting because a lot of people <laughs> a lot of people say to me, was that choreographed? I said, does that look unchoreographed? And, that, and I said, absolutely, 100%. Um, it was all choreographed and it has to be choreographed because of the, you know, picking up from the marks and, 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 and shooting it from different angles and stuff. So every bit was choreographed. But then I remember Gillian Gregory, who was the choreographer on it, saying, Try not to make it look choreographed. Try not to make it look as if you can't really dance, but you can dance. So it was sort of like I was sort of having a battle within myself, saying, well, I'm a professional dancer, and I want to make it look really wonderful. And, but yes, yeah, so that's probably why that's the question a lot of times. Was it choreographed or was it improvised? They went, no, 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 it was choreographed. Gotcha. Yeah. Are you done? Now, like... Do you have any like favorite memories with like the actors or because you were talking about how many you know stars were around mm. you and everything and you know mm. you're on this set with George mm. Lucas and everything mm. like mm. like I guess like almost like a two part question like what were your nerves like doing playing the role kind <laughs> of I mean I know it's what you do I, I'll talk to people who are like actors or actresses and I'm just like I always think about nerves because me personally I would be like oh my god like look at all these people here all right let's go but um. <laughs> Yeah, like, what was it kind of like being on set with everybody and everything? Well, you, you know, what? I, I, when I look back on it, I could have felt really intimidated because I was the only one there. I was the only one who had to get up and do the routine in front of everybody. But because I'd been in the business for quite a while, quite a few years, it was like, yeah, come on, I'm going to show up and do it. Yeah. You know, and I didn't, really, I didn't even think about nerves. I just, I just sort of focused on what I had to do. Um, obstacles I had to get over, overcome, surmount. Um, and it was such a lovely atmosphere on, on, on set. You know, there were no egos, there were no, the, everybody was there. And so that energy really helped you to focus on what you needed to do. Um, so I, that dissipated the nerves, that really dissipated the nerves. So that I, was, I was lucky in that respect. And, I remember, I have, I've hardly said this, but I remember when Billy D. Williams used to come up and had little chats with me as well. And he used to say, and he, d he didn't know I was black either. He had no <laughs> idea. He didn't. And then he said, and he said to me, girl, you, you, are you African? Are you African? You, I can see that, the features coming through that green skin. I said, great, brilliant. That's what they wanted. But yeah, no, it was, it was really, I was really lucky to be in the original Jabba's Palace. 
and to you know compare it with going back into 1995 and doing it and feeling yeah I just felt more isolated I don't know but it had to make you feel good that I mean look I, I'm 50 so I look at myself and say 15 years ago, I probably looked a little different, felt a little different. <laughs> you went back from 1982 yeah. to 1995. Yeah. Still yeah. looked great, still yeah. did the role, right? Yeah. But I think someone just said that to me just now and said, you, you know, you look the same, but because you're a dancer. And because we're so disciplined, you know, I was still dancing back then as well. And I'm sort of, you know, I, I like to keep in shape. Sure. And I think it's important. Um, so I was fortunate that that served me well when I got the phone call saying, the first thing they said, you've got to fit in your original costume because you know we need to merge the two scenes together <laughs> or else we'll CGI you. Uh, that, that, <laughs> you know, they said that, honestly, they said wow. that. And went, oh. I'll hit you with this one last question as we kind of tie up here and things like that. You mentioned the costume. Star Wars is so, they've got such a tight grip on everything that they have and own, right? Hmm. Did they let you keep the costume? Well, thank goodness they didn't. They didn't. And thank goodness I didn't liberate any pieces of it, because a lot of actors do. <laughs> you know, they'll say, well, I'll take this, I'll take that. But, you know, because it's all archived. Mm -hmm. So if I had, and they called me back and said, you've got to fit in your original costume, and I went, oh, dear, I've got this part of it. <laughs> Have you made a replica of it? So, no, no, I didn't. I didn't. I just um, I let it be. I just stepped in the job, did it, and stepped out, and, and, and went on and did many other things. Well, it has been our honor and pleasure to sit here with you and oh, go back and you. go over these memories and everything. Uh, you know, it's amazing to me that here we are 40 years later and you've, you've created a trend with all these people here in, yeah, in those outfits. So yes. thank you for being here. Um, the ICC Con 20, yeah, ICC Con, <laughs> too many C's, guys. 2023, uh, we're going to wrap this up. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. For Alfie, for D Doc, for the Rule of Galaxy podcast, for Femi Taylor. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. We we can go pinch ourselves now and say we were, <laughs> we were on a show with Ula from Return of the Jedi. Yeah.